Hey, I'm Matthew Stoko, and you're watching Mind Pollution Gaming. Mind Pollution Gaming. I remember living in a little bed set in England and I was I bought a typewriter and I put a piece of paper and I'm like, right, okay, I'll start writing something. Mm -hmm. I got a page and it was like, what the fuck? He wasn't like the people on the streets. They lived so perfectly. They knew exactly what to do to be happy and they did it without even having to think. And the TV beamed their lives into his head, his dreams. Hollywood, here I come. The dash lights glowed, comfortable, orange. I wanted to believe what they said, that everything was running smooth and correct. I wanted to, but I didn't. She'd been gone too long. What's up guys, my name is Daniel and welcome to Mind Pollution Gaming. This is episode 8 and the man next to me has published 4 novels and I'm very happy he's here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stoko. Thank hey. you so much for being here man, I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. That's awesome. Um, you're the first writer on the show so that's gonna be interesting. Um, how, what's your level of gaming? Minus one. Okay, cool. I tell you, the only one that I played, actually really played, was Silent Hill on the PS2. What an amazing game. Yeah, it was freaky. I, like, did, I didn't get to the end of it, okay. but you know, I did pretty well. You have pretty gory stuff also in your books. Yep. We could try playing Manhunt, which was one of my favorite games for a long time. Let's do it. Okay. We will play Manhunt. Now let's go fetish. <laughs> we don't want to go crazy. <laughs> My first job was film editor. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, it was out of, out of high school. Oh. Uh, when they still use film. Uh -huh. And I did it for um, a TV commercial. Oh, about, wow. About um, two years. Oh, okay. In Australia. Do you like it? Oh, I loved it, and I thought I would be really good at it, but I, then I left and I went to England, and it, oh, okay. you know, I, I, I stepped off that path, unfortunately. Right. You know. But also, you were born in Australia? <laughs> no, born in England, uh -huh. and uh, emigrated to Australia when I was about six. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were, they called them 10 pound poms, because okay. it cost 10 pounds for an air ticket for all oh, that, really? the, the British people to go to Australia when oh, they, wow. wanted, they wanted lots of white British people, uh -huh. there, you know, to start with. <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> You were born in the UK, went to Australia? Yeah, grew up in Australia, worked for a couple of years, mm -hmm. went to the UK. Oh, okay. And lived in London for about 15 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that where you started writing? Or how did you come to writing, actually? Like, was that a conscious decision to be like, I want to write novels? Uh, yeah, kind of, I wanted to, but I didn't know how to do it. Oh, know? okay. And I remember living in a little bed set in England, and I was, I bought a typewriter, and I put a piece of paper, and I'm like, right, okay, I'll start writing something. Mm -hmm. I got a page, and it was like, what the fuck? You know what I do now? <laughs> right. But then a few years later, I, I went to university a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And um, after writing all the essays for my degree, I, yeah. I'd figured out how to structure right. stuff. And um, I did a little bit of a screenwriting course. I wrote two screenplays, mm -hmm. feature length screenplays. And then um, I thought, you know, that's a really strict discipline. It is. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I, I guess I wasn't, you know, prepared to try and master it at <laughs> that point. So I said, right, I'm going to write a novel. I sat down and wrote Cows. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Another one that I had played around the time of Silent Hills was um, Tony Hawk's skateboarding thing. Okay. But uh, the number of button things you can right, do right, on right. that yeah, is just too difficult. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's beyond me. So basically what you want to do is um, stay in the shadows if there's somebody coming up because they can't see you while you're in the shadows. All right. Okay. So I'm going to let you All right. just figure it out <laughs> and see what, what happens. <clears throat> So now you have a plastic okay. bag, which is nice because the next dude... Ah, uh, yes, because I can, guess I can put it over somebody's head. Exactly. Huh? Release the button. <laughs> now. Nah. Oh, Boom, your oh, first okay. kill. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, good job. You killed the first guy. <laughs> so how did you get the idea for cows? I mean, it's a pretty unusual <clears throat> book, so how did you get the, the main idea? If I do my first novel, see, I had a lot of ideals in those days, and I was right. like, if I do my first novel, it's going to be exactly what I want. I right. don't give a shit what anybody says. Yeah. Da, da, da. And so, I just, I didn't even plot it out. I just yeah. sat down one day and I just started writing and I didn't even know it was going to have cows in it. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, then I was just writing and this image of, you know, this whole deal with the cows just came to me and I yeah. thought, well, yeah, that's crazy, but um, I'll go with it. You know? Right. And, and uh, I think the book was like basically a reflection of the whole, or the, like the poverty, the ignorance and the violence mm -hmm. all through the 80s and the early 90s there. Um, sort of made its way into that book. Shit, dude. Leave me alone. Ah, there we go. I want to stealth kill him. 
So you already did better than me. <laughs> Fuck. Man. Ah, okay, what do I get? And oh, painkillers. Yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> and now we can just turn left and jump down there. And you already got it down. <laughs> Man, I think we found your game already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah if I, just the sensitivity of the controls right. is, uh, like, do, always defeats me. Mm. Now he's he's afraid of you. Shit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. Punch him, <laughs> kill him. In cows, I like the idea of Lucy. Yeah. How she explains that all the bad shit basically from your from your mind ends up in the gut and all that. Yeah. Well, like right at the beginning of the book, he talks about eating his mother's food, right? Right. And that's and he's like kind of concerned about the toxins in that. Right. And I guess around that time was when <clears throat> I was like a lot into health food at that mm -hmm. point. You know, I think that whole notion of the antitoxins and the toxins and the cleansing and all right. that sort of stuff. And it, it just seemed like this physical, you know, your emotions would turn into some sort of right. physical thing right. you can get rid of. That's amazing mm -hmm. though. Like, I always appreciate when artists just do their thing. And that's, I guess, what you meant also with screenplays. There's so many rules and all yeah. of that. <clears throat> well, we're, in, we're just like ingrained to like accept that structure of viewers, you know? Like, you, it's just ridiculous. I read this one book, you know, like all these billions of screenwriting books you can get. Yeah, and yeah. he goes, uh, you know, now the second act must start on page 71. Right. Not 72. Right. Or 70. It's got to start on yeah. 70 or something like that, you know. Yeah, like <laughs> where's the creativity there? And, mm. and I mean, that's why we end up having so many shitty movies too, because yeah. everybody's like, oh shit, like this is just a formula that people use. And that's what I mean. Like, I really appreciate that also about your books that you just do, what, or it seems like you just do what you like. and. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I guess there's some artifice in it, some, in some respects, in the, maybe the later books a little bit, but right. um, I always thought that, well, I still do think that, like, the public, the readers, like, will accept a lot more than, than you know, the agents and the publishers go, oh my God, we can't do this, we right. can't publish that. But when, you know, they always proved wrong because there's always these exceptions which come out and they're always, you know, a lot of them are like, oh wow, this is an amazing groundbreaking novel, but right. you took that to like the nine previous publishers, they're exactly. like, oh man, we can't have the news. And High Life, was, <clears throat> was that inspired by your time living in LA? Yeah, I'd been um, like obsessed with Hollywood mm -hmm. and the history of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, more from the, the, the start of the industry yeah. um, out here and the moguls and the studios and stuff. And then all the lives that revolved around that, you right. Know, right from the 20s onwards, say. And um, I was kind of steeped in this sort of stuff before uh -huh. I even came over here. When, yeah. I, when I came here the first time, it was like, oh my God, yeah, this is just a, a dream come true. And right. It's really like everything I ever mm -hmm. imagined. And um, after I'd finished Cows, I was like, Okay, what am I going to do? Because I didn't get Cows published for like five years after I yeah. finished it, right? And um, so I was in that kind of limbo looking around for something that might be a little bit more publishable. Mm -hmm. And I saw Basic Instinct and I was like, ah, oh, that's so slick. You know, that was a really cool movie right. at that time. And um, I thought, okay, I'm going to write a novel, you know, slick as this and yeah, well, yeah. I'll, I'll sell this one. But as I was writing, all this stuff just came, still kept mm -hmm. coming out, yeah. you know, all the dark stuff. And I uh, ended up with High Life, and that again took about five years to get published. And yeah. um, at that point, when I wrote it, the internet existed, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as pumping as it is today. Right. And, and the gossip, all the gossip, the Hollywood gossip, was coming through magazines mostly. Yeah. And I saw all this gossip coming out, so, you know, and I, I don't know, just that they kind of just morphed into this thing where. Uh -huh somebody would just only be obsessed with the very peripheral levels right. of, of, of fame and success. Hence, my life, yeah. That's awesome. This lock-on button is useful, right? Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Oh. All right. Man, you're killing, <laughs> killing guys here. <laughs> it's frightening. I always regard myself as such a gentle, mild person, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. Because. I can see that. It's coming out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. It all comes out in the books and the games. But that's what they're for. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's yeah. literally what they're for. Yeah. I've really, I guess, benefited from the whole internet thing. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> it just got talked about an awful lot. Yeah, and then it got, your yeah. books got and translated to different yeah, languages. Yeah, that's right. And all and all the deals in France and Germany and, yeah. you know, even Russia. That's crazy. 
I mean, I can see it in Russia. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have these Russian guys. They they like you know message me all the time, and I had this one guy. He just sent me question after question. He said, "I got high life, you know." And I, Tell me what what actually this means in English, you know, like what it, what it really is. And I'm yeah, okay, answer this and answer this and answer this. Yeah. And I said, and then eventually I'm, dude, are you translating this book? You know, like in, in Russian, he's <laughs> oh, like, wow. oh no, 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 no. He's like but, bootlegging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they did. Oh and wow. And so some other guys in touch with me. It's like, oh yeah, we love cows because cows do get published in Russian through a Russian publishing house, and that was another whole. So he did the same thing. Story. No. But yeah, and he said, oh yes, yeah, we've translated over here. You know, it's what like the fuck? this is a black market. Without you knowing. Story. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I didn't even know the cows was was being done in Russia. That was sold by the English publisher without any of my sort of <laughs> knowing about that it. That is crazy. So there's like books in different languages and you didn't even know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, you kind of learn that <clears throat> some of the foreign deals, if you're not like a real powerful author, you know, right. you basically sign them and you can forget it. You, yeah, you can yeah. forget any royalty. Yeah, of course. Any, or even any real interaction with them. They, once yeah. they've got the book, they're like, thing. So I reckon, you know, even though there might be some bootleg copies of High Life floating around, you know, Moscow and all the rest yeah. of it, it's At kind least of your cool. work is out you know, there. It's nice, yeah. Should we try a different game? Sure. I have something else. We're going to play a game called Zombie Nation. What year is that from? 1990. It never came out in the States. It's a Japanese game. Okay. Zombie Nation. Look at these graphics. Right? 1990. Yeah. It's like, it's a step back from what we just played, but... <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> this looks See? <laughs> this is something we can just like easily play and talk. <laughs> Look at this though, it's a fucking head floating around the city, <laughs> shooting. <laughs> Alright, I guess it's mm -hmm. your turn. Okay. What, what, what are the buttons? Uh, uh, I think you just shoot on that one. On, yeah. on this one? Yeah. Okay. Let's try again. Okay, just shoot okay. on the B button, I think. B, 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 B. Ah, there okay. you go. Hey. Just keep shooting the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Do you write every day? Uh, I took a few years off once I finished Colony of Whores. Mm -hmm. And um, so, last couple of years, uh, I haven't been writing, but um, I've, I've started work on. Oh, hang on. Started working on another thing, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know, trying to do like three hours a day. You know, you lose track of things. Um, yeah. It's, and the novels like so, you know, contain so many different threads. That, yeah. So, yeah. so you outline them before? I mean. Yeah, cows. I didn't. I just sat down and did and that you day, by, day by day. Yeah, and I was. It's more spontaneous and. Right. In some sense, it's more honorable. It's more of a true story, yeah. in, in a sense. Um, but, you know, I used to like, I used to go running at that time, and I remember running along this place in England going, what the fuck is Crips going to do next? You yeah, know, yeah, from yeah. one page to the next. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I did, so ever since then, I've um, plotted them out. Yeah. And that's really quite an extensive process, I mean, yeah. for me anyway. And I had a couple of short films too. They got made. I um, saw that. Yeah, it's a real shame. Um, there's this really cool guy, Paul Kwiatkowski. After he read Cows, this was quite a good few years ago, um, said, hey, will you write me a screenplay, mm -hmm. you know, for an independent film? And um, I was like, wow, yeah, what, you mean you're gonna pay me? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pay it. Um, but he got it together and he shot that film called Dog, but I don't think anybody can get it. I, I think it maybe wasn't his artistic path. Oh, okay. And he, he would prefer not to show, which I really wish he would, because yeah, you know, I yeah. think it's cool. And when I was living in New Zealand as well, they had a, quite a good thing there called the Short Film Fund. So I wrote this film called Dog, and it looks really good. It has a really nice visual. You can probably find it if you look up, um, oh no, it's called Rock, not Dog. And then, man, I got, that was my first fucking uh, entry into <laughs> this sort of kind of film business. Mm -hmm. and not that I've had bent much at all after yeah. that, but um, they go, yeah, right, yeah, this is this is good. We'll we'll fund this, and but um, I want you to work with the director. So for the next year, I must have done about twenty different drafts with two different directors, and wow, this is a ten minute that short. That is crazy film. for a yeah. short. Yeah, that's, the producer wow. I think was they're all old entrenched, mm -hmm. or they were then oh, okay. New Zealand sort of yeah. film grannies, and um, uh, I don't know anyway. So it eventually got made, but it was pretty much fucked up. Yeah. This this kid all covered in like mud who was going to be a rock, right? Oh, and okay. that was his withdrawal from a really abusive family. Right. But um, it just didn't, it didn't work out. <clears throat> Tell me about Empty Mind. I never wanted to do like a really autobiographical novel or anything. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but there, of all the books, that has the most sort of disguised autobiographical elements right. in it. And um, <clears throat> so it was a real tough book to write. And you know, anybody who's read it realizes that it's not a it's not a high life too, which right. um, I think disappointed some people. I actually even was thinking about putting it out under a, a pseudonym, mm -hmm. and the publishers just said no, which was probably a mistake, I think. But anyway, it did really well. Why, why did you want to put it out? Because there's more personal stuff in there? <laughs> well, because, well, I, you know, I knew people were so, like, uh, uh, so into um, <laughs> high life, uh, right. the violence and the, okay. the sex. And so the, that they would expect something. They would expect something else, and they did. That's exactly what happened, you know. And um, But funnily enough, uh, for all the people who hadn't read High Life, they loved Into and, right. um, and it did very well in France and Germany oh, and all the rest. But um, again, just it did. It was when it came out. It was kind of mismarketed over yeah. in, the, in the states. And so. You republish them yourself now, right? Yeah. When I fill out with a cashier over the the foreign royalties for pretty much all the books, I just you know I took them all back, mm -hmm. and um, I think they were probably happy to see me go. You know, because yeah, yeah. I'd been a bit of a thorn in the side of uh -huh. them. And um, and then you know, fortunately, it was at that point where you could you could do like really high quality um, yeah. uh, print on demand stuff. So, Colony of Wars was that more? <clears throat> trying to capture what you had in uh, high life a little uh, bit it was a it was a, a midpoint you know between mm -hmm. it was um, I see it as sitting between high life and, and empty mile right and I was I'm pretty happy with that level of stuff now I mean yeah. I can go and write you know really horrible violent stuff but yeah. it, it, after a while you grow out of it you know yeah. and I don't think it should be forced like a lot of I've, I've been lucky because very, very few people, in fact, like, I don't even know if anybody ever said, you know, oh, all the violence in Chaos and High Life is gratuitous and, you know, complete superfluous and bullshit. Almost everybody is like, ah, oh, you know, that's, that's just really part integral to the story. And I was happy with that. I agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, but I think if I'd sat down and tried to write something that was really violent and horrible, yeah. it would have been, it would have rung hollow, you know, yeah. it, would have, it would have seemed... Um, Meaningless. Yeah, and, and just contrived. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I was happy with, with that, where Colony fell within that. And I also saw that as kind of a graphic novel, actually. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little cartoonish. All right, we are going to play the Bible game. It, oh, it's literally called the Bible game. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, um, uh, what, would you what, what have we got? What's got the a hope of something? There's, there's no Sodom and Gomorrah there. No. Um, uh, Tower of Babel. Yeah, I would yeah. say so, right? That's it. Uh, okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh my god, this, what? Who am I? Where are we? Oh, I'm, I'm the yellow arrow? What? Oh and, I, oh, and I'm the red one. What the fuck? No. Oh, what oh we... yes. Oh, so you gotta do like a square and that brings down the tower fuck you <laughs> ah there we go ah, i get it do you have any interest doing movie stuff anymore or? oh yeah for sure at one point i was thinking oh yeah i'm gonna do a novel and a screenplay and a novel and a screenplay yeah but the thing is i think you've got to maybe not so much now but you know a little while ago you kind of had to be in la for it mm. and and to be meeting people because yeah the difference with a novel, obviously, you know, it's, it's obvious, uh, is that it exists anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> but a screenplay doesn't exist unless it's made into a movie. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It, Other, before that, it's just word, words on a page and that, nobody cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least with a novel, you know, even if you can't get it published, you can publish it yourself. Right. But there's nothing you can do with a screenplay yeah. um, if it doesn't get made. <laughs> But man, Matt, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a busy man and you're heading back to Australia on what's that? A couple of days, yeah. That's yeah, awesome, yeah, yeah. man. So I really appreciate that. Thank, thank you for so having much. me. Oh, hold up. Would you sign books for me? Oh, absolutely. That would be amazing. <laughs> because I got cows oh, and I got high life. I would have bought you um, Connie. I got some with me. Oh, well, if you're over in West Hollywood, give me a call. Do you have any specific thing that you usually write in? Oh, I remember going to see James Elroy, right? Uh-huh. Because yeah. I loved his stuff up until a certain point. Yeah. And um, I saw him in London, and my girlfriend at the time goes to him, oh, yeah, oh, yeah Matthew wants to be a writer. And he, and he just said, well, 
keep on writing. You know, and then he would write um, L.A. Slash him up, James Elroy. You know, like stuff like this. So, L.A. Bloodbath. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought, oh, this guy's, you know, he really, he's got his shit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. <laughs> It's not the first time he's doing it. <laughs> well, Matt, thanks, thanks for coming and thanks for signing the books. I really appreciate it. Hey. And I can't wait to read whatever you're writing next. I'm really excited about it. Thank you, Bill. Well, you'll be the first to know. Okay, thank <laughs> thanks you so Dan. much, man. Awesome, mate. All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and see you at the next episode. All right, bye. Mind Pollution Gaming.